All right, welcome back to day two. two. Um, today, we're going to be masking off some stuff. So, uh, I have my helmet out today. Uh, so, when you're thinking about rusting, every high point, every kind of curved edge, you're going to have at least some rust in there. Especially creases, because rust come from where paint chips away and then that exposes that metal to that oxidation and paint is vulnerable on edges and uh, points uh, that type of things and so you'll see often a lot of times on high points you'll get rust points here obviously it's all around the rangefinder and so how we can kind of use that is I mask off using painter's tape and mask all this stuff I got this stuff on Amazon. I'll try and put a link to it. Um, this stuff is like silicone stuff. So you use these brushes that you get this giant pack for like a dollar and a half because they're gross and you'll just ruin the brushes. So something also to note is that this is going to be your best chance to put down your rust. So you're going to want to like layer it all down now before you get it back. And as you can see here, like I've already have a paint chip spot there. So I'm not gonna like, I'm gonna put rust there because I can cover that. Cause otherwise it's not gonna be like a pretty smooth finish. So those things to note. So I'll mask off one set and then I'll come back. All right, so this is the first panel. As you can see, I've gone from, so I've used the masking tape or the painter's tape to do up all the edges in this bigger chunk. And that's so that I can save the mask all for the smaller stuff and thereby like saving that. Like I still have so much left in that bottle. Um, I could totally do another set of whole set of armor with it. If not, like probably two, it lasts. Um, but mostly because I'm using this method, so I'm, you know, saving it. So you can see, like, I started up here in this corner, and this kind of, like, kind of translucent blue, purple blue stuff, that's the dried, as you can see, like, I was kind of thicker here, um, and so that still is drying. And so you can't spray paint it until that's dry, but so this panel, I've done a look that is a panel that's going to be facing vertical because there isn't um, a lot of large resting sitting spots. Like on my helmet, you see like all of this vertical front facing panels. Most of the rust is running down because rain would run down the mask or down through the crevices. And that's where the paint would be stripped down. So that's the idea with this panel. So for this one, I'm gonna put this to the side. Scooch, scooch, um, grabbing this one. So this panel, I'm gonna make it um, a more horizontal panel, a panel like you might see on a gauntlet where you're looking at a very, uh, a, a piece of armor where it's kind of flat and it sees a lot more rain gonna sit down on it and then roll off type of action. So something like the top of my helmet. So it's gonna be rusted on the edges, but there's gonna be more um, spots in the middle. So, hold on, stop and, all right. Go kooks, by the way. So with your tape for your edges, what you're gonna do is gonna be ripping it down the middle here. And so it's just like, kind of like, it down like that and it, you're just kind of like going crazy so you kind of end up with two pieces these are pretty flat um you can like rip them side to side and like make them more raggedy if you want but basically what you're doing here is you're just taking some of the edge off so that you don't have to use as much of the mask all and so when you go on here you're gonna end up laying it down on an edge and i'll lay it down and then i'll show you guys so I'm gonna lay this down on an edge, find an, a way that looks cool for you because you know, it's your armor. You do what you wanna do, fam, man. And so you wanna really make sure your edge is covered because again, 
basically every single edge of your armor is gonna get rusted and so you want to make sure that edge is protected uh, for that reason uh, you might want to be spray painting the bottom like second like this part too like so when you like spray paint it you're like kind of hold it weird which for a curved piece of armor will make more sense so this is what it'll look like when you have you put that layer down so here's like that spot that i'm probably going to be covering with the mask all later uh and then you'll just take your next piece and you'll lay it down and then you'll do a little a little thing um and any extra like parts off the edge you'll just like curve underneath and then yeah and so that's one edge done so I'll come back when I have more edges done. Okay, so I have my edges done. Uh, I get a lot more of these like curved and like jagged edges when I like serpentine zigzag rip it, which is hard to do on camera apparently. So what I'm gonna be doing now is making this be uh, like kind of down the middle, in the middle chunk of uh, spaces where yeah, don't put, don't let weird things be on it. Um, uh, your marks. So what I'm going to do is, because I don't want to use a lot of the mask all for that, is I'm going to be using more tape. So what I do is I take a chunk of tape and I rip it in half because straight lines are your enemy. And then I normally take a chunk and I rip it in half again. So now I have like a fourth of my tape that I had. And... As you can see, there's two straight edges here. There's one here and there's one there. And so I'm gonna just stick them together and I kind of make a blob that has no straight edges in it at all. And so this is what I'm gonna use to put somewhere in the middle as a base for where the masking uh, stuff is gonna go. So I'm just gonna stick it somewhere in the middle here. I'm gonna go stick. And there really isn't a right way or a wrong way to do with this. As long as you're aware of how the armor's gonna lay and how it's gonna fit. Like, which makes doing this on this flat piece of surface where I don't have it gonna be on my body uh, really hard for me because, you know, it's not gonna go on my body. So there's no reasonable way for this rusting to go. So, you know, just making it harder for myself. So, just two random blobs in the middle and I'm just gonna call that cool enough and so something else you want to be thinking about while you're doing this is where your accent colors are gonna be so on my armor I have uh, my main color is that teal blue uh, turquoise color and then my accent color is the cream and so when you're choosing your colors you're wanting colors that are looking like what your weathering type is going to be so like mine is a sniper so she's going to be a lot more in the sun what happens to colors in the sun they get sun faded so they turn a little bit more of that yellow tint so that turquoise blue is now more of a teal because of the yellowing the white uh, the cream is a cream and not white because of that yellowing and on that same note is when you're looking at your rust is something really awesome to do on your rust is when you have it on the blue and the white so that your acts your two accent colors so when you're looking at this is you're gonna have like on this piece my plan is to put some stripes i'm gonna do um like a cross so i'm gonna put a white stripe across the center and a white stripe down and then on this panel i was gonna i'm gonna put some diamonds like that are on top of my helmet so you have like three different types of diamonds that kind of span where your armor set is. And so because of that, you kind of want to put your rusting kind of somewhere with that because you know that looks cool. So I'm going to try and set this up so I can paint and talk and I'll be back. Okay, so this is the paintbrush I just used for that one. But I can't use this anymore because it's already dried and gone crazy. Um, by the way, this stuff smells horrible. 
Uh, totally recommend doing it in a ventilated room. And so you just kind of glob some on. And what you end up doing is just kind of like making your edge even more rough. Because you rust does not follow any sort of guidelines. It's not, it does not abide by my OCD rules. Um, it just kind of goes everywhere. And if you mess up, guess what? That's more weathering. You know, just more weathering. Um, there is, as long as it looks reasonable, there's no real um, words to do this. Yeah. I'm going to try and paint this. Just kind of blob that on. And so, there's one edge. Nice. So, I've just made the edge a lot rougher than the paint edge. And so, now with these, like I said, like this is going to be like if it was on your gauntlets. So, what's going to happen is I'm just going to like kind of make this again a lot more rough. But instead of making my... Um, I don't know, my drips all going like down. I'm kind of just kind of like letting it kind of pool and sit and do whatever it kind of wants to do when I kind of like just shake the brush around. And I'm trying to video and paint, which is kind of hard. So I'm sorry. I just kind of like. Um, and it just kind of just kind of goes everywhere. And so you just make the edges a lot more rough. And I can kind of like. Like, oh, like, this is, oops, this is kind of connected, yay, um, type of stuff, because most likely that's kind of what's going to happen, is, like, you'll have one piece that's going to go into another piece, and then it's going to just chip that whole section off, and, yeah, so, like, right there, there's, like, a little gap, yeah, fill that in, feel all of that stuff in, because, you know, Spray paint gets everywhere, and so you want to have all your edges filled because that's what's going to look weird when you're going to have be like, oh, well, you know, like there's a glob of rust there, but there's like one little spot of white left. That's totally realistic. Yeah, don't do that. Um, just kind of glob that all on there. Yeah. And like, it's okay if it's like a lot because, you know, it's fine. There's, again, no real right rhyme or reason to doing this. This way or that way or just smatter it all on. Just rub that all in. Yeah. I'm probably going to speed all this up. I don't know. We'll see. And then you just kind of add other gloobs everywhere. Oh, that one kind of looks like a bird. Yeah, I have a deer hidden in mine. Um, because I thought it looked cool. Um, you can just hide weird shapes in it like I don't know um let's see if I can make like a mythosaur skull I don't know as long as it doesn't look too obvious you can hide a whole bunch of stuff in there as long as it's appropriate of course I don't know that kind of ask uh, that just looks weird I'll just kind of feel that in yeah yeah you just feel that in there you go there you go that looks better yeah see sometimes you can make cool things and sometimes you can't that's just kind of how being creative works. Um, yeah. So then you just kind of like... <laughs> Try not to get this stuff on your clothes or your table or like literally anywhere but the piece because it's like annoying. I mean, it gets off really easy as soon as it dries. But having to wait till it dries is a real pain. Um, just glue that there. Yeah. So your edges are kind of going to be like spots, obviously, that's going to be more heavily used. You also want to know that rust and paint can go away from things that are touched. So like, obviously, your edges um, are going to get touched a lot more. Anything that is going to be like heavily put on or put off, like for that reason, my helmet uh, kind of up the sides on my ear caps gets a lot has a lot of wear on it because guess what that's where I touched to put my helmet on um my uh gauntlets uh, have two different colors uh 
two different, not color scenes, uh, two different rust patterns on them. The left one that holds um, the sniper up, so it holds at a more vertical line, is um, obviously has a lot of like rust that's very connected. So like this is like pools that are like not really connected. So my left gauntlet, there's like one whole line of rust because ranges would go down it as the gun is being held um, at a vertical line. On the right one, there's like poolings like this one, like this piece has, because guess what? My uh, right arm kind of holds more uh, horizontal as it's uh, waiting to pull that trigger. So um, being understanding of how your armor is being used. Um, but I mean, there's also a sense of, well, you wanna look cool and don't like wanna be completely rusted out, or at least in my opinion anyway, because if I was being totally honest, my entire kit would probably be rusted out and there would be very little, um, very little paint on it if I was being totally cool because sniper is late prone which means my entire armor, my entire chest armor would be down in the dirt getting uh, battered and braided by the dust in the sand and whatever have you. And so that would all be, um, uh, that would all be uh, getting rusted out and I would have actually very little color left on it, but I wanted turquoise, so I left a lot of it on. So in some sense, that's like not super realistic. There's a star, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's a weird looking star. It's kind of more of a flower now. There you go. And so you're just kind of like making weird shapes. Just making things that kind of look like rust points and rust spots. And so that kind of here just is just kind of looking at something that looks like um, a piece of metal that this one center line obviously has seen the brunt of the force. And so now I have like this and I try and like scrape as much of this stuff off the brush as possible so I can save it. And just to show you just that is like how much I have left. So I'm like not even like 90% of the way done with it. Um, and so then you just cap it and then you're done. And then you wait until it's dried. So given the fact that that one is almost dry, I'm going to say probably 15, 20 minutes. We'll be back.